What's up guys, this is Chris here, and today we're gonna to be doing another First Shots video. Today, we're gonna to be doing a First Shots on a controversial and very interesting firearm. Today we're gonna to be looking at the H&K SL8-1. Now if this looks familiar, it should. It sort of looks like a space-aged version of a G36, and that's because it is. Due to import bans over the 80s and 90s, H&K had to get the G36 into America somehow, and they did it looking like this. <laughs> This is actually a compliance version, essentially, of the classic G36 that you'd find in, like, Call of Duty, many movies. It looks very space age, and it was used by the British military for a very long time. They, however, traded up for a better gun. You guys know what that is. This gun in itself has some interesting quirks and certainly some interesting features, which we're not only going to talk about today, but we're going to use. So once we get done telling you what it is, we're going to go down and shoot a couple hundred rounds through it and see how it performs. First thing is we have a very interesting magazine design, which is a, basically the left half of a G36 magazine. So they couldn't have a double stack magazine or they couldn't have a magazine that took a 30 round mag. So they basically cut it in half, made it single stack, so you now only have 10 rounds available for you. Very interesting translucent magazine design that allows you to see how many rounds you have, but you don't have to worry that much because it's only 10, so you can count on your fingers, you're good to go. We have ambi controls here, very similar to the G36. This is the ambi charging handle uh, system of the G36. Obviously the same carry handle system as well. Works kind of similar to the carry handle of the original uh, M16s. However, you can still put an optic on it, which is kind of interesting because if you use standard height optics, it kind of puts you at the modern day height. Everybody likes their optics higher and higher these days. I do myself, it's easier for your neck, it's faster to shoot up close. So it actually works out uh, in a very retro sort of way. We have ambi controls on the back here. We have this standard HK magazine release. And then we have a polymer handguard, which has been a feature of much controversy when it comes to the accuracy of the G36. Now, I don't know anything about the accuracy of the SL8, but we will test that today. It has a short stroke gas piston design, which everybody loves because it's easier to suppress and is in theory more reliable because it keeps the gunk up here and doesn't shoot it back into your chamber. Although in my experience for the average user, civilians, direct impingement is just fine. We also have the lovely non-threaded barrel here, and then finally the thumb hole stock, which looks very cool in space age, but in all reality is just a fix for eight band that was in the 80s and 90s. So you still have sort of the function of a pistol grip without actually having a pistol grip because it's not classified as a pistol grip if it's connected to the stock. Very weird, but it is what it is. Now, in our previous G36 videos, or our Tommy built videos, which is the closest us Americans can get to a G36, we actually had a lot of reliability issues. Now I've had two of those, both of them were uh, little guys, they were the 10 inchers, and maybe that has to do with it, but barrel length doesn't really affect uh, gas piston designs as much as it does DI, so hopefully we don't have any reliability issues. So today we're gonna be using PMC X-TAC 556. Uh, hopefully this works, that was the most reliable ammunition in my previous G36 videos. But we're also gonna be rocking some Hornady Black 223, uh, 75 grain boat-tailed hollow points, this is like my favorite ammunition ever. We're going to be going with some Nautilus 223 ammo, some classic Federal, and then obviously the Elite 77 grain OTM Marksman by Sig Sauer. So we're going to have a good bit of high quality ammunition here to shoot through a high quality gun. Hopefully we get good accuracy, hopefully we get good performance. We'll have to see. Before we do that though, I want to mention my Patreon supporters. Thank you guys very much. It's because of you guys we have guns like this on the channel. I got this from Brownells with the Patreon dollars, so I appreciate that. If you want to support the channel, that's the best way to do it. Just go to the link in the description. Also in that description is a link to a local shelter in Ames, Iowa. It's the YSS. Those kids could really use your help, so please go down and donate to those kids. Fuck, it's getting hot. So this is the SL8 magazine, as you can see here. It's half of a G36 mag. This is a G36 mag. This is a 25 rounder. And uh, you can see there, they are very similar. It's just cut in half. You 10 rounds here, 25 here. It's fucking terrible to load. It is not easy. Yeah. 
out of all the AR mags I've ever loaded, this is the single right up there with the shittiest. Yeah, well. can't even get more than one, two, three, four, five, six rounds in it. Okay. Um. No impact. Now, what inspired me to buy this gun is I actually saw this on the movie Extraction. There's a guy using one as a sniper rifle, so I was like, man, I gotta get that. Is it Sexy Hemsworth? It actually isn't. It's the uh, like the evil general shooting at him. It's the oh. gun he got shot with, actually. SL8 got old Hemsworth. Oh no! I don't know why, but the trigger is nicer in this than in my G36. Like all the pulls felt real good. So my first group here, that's a pretty good group. There's three there. My second group I did kind of fast, but I figured out where I was. And then my third group, this is when I took time on. And you're looking at, you know, a sub-inch group. So we're at about two MOA with the SL8. That's pretty good. I hit that guy, but he didn't mm -hmm. stand. There he, he looks broken. Short burst of fun. Doable. We've been using this up to this point. It's been actually shooting really, really good groups, and uh, it's been very reliable. This is already way more reliable than my previous two Tommy builds. It is from H and K, and so there is that. Uh, however, now, just for the fun's sake, we're gonna switch to some standard 223 Remington. This is the lowest powered ammunition. So we're gonna go from highest powered to lowest powered. And we're gonna see if it runs in this. And if it doesn't, that's fine. We'll just go back to the other stuff. So if we see any failures in this, you'll know why. Oh boy. <laughs> kind of funny that c-zone target the bore axis on this gun is so fucking high like you can see there that uh when i'm shooting through the barricade a lot of times i can only see the stand of the target so accurate though we're hitting that a-zone easy try to get some of those plates well, i say that and then we miss four times in a row There's a dragonfly in my way. Don't move. Don't die, dragonfly. Oh, I'm out. Is it Ambi? Yep, it goes either way. Nice.
Shot that really well. well I kind of like it. Yeah? It's kind of fun. Yeah. And it looks cool. It does. So the piston system gives it a little bit more recoil. Also, we have a bare muzzle up here instead of a muzzle device like a flash hider or a muzzle brake. Even a flash hider takes off some of the recoil. So it's a little bit more difficult to shoot, not only because of that, but the ergonomics are not as comfortable. So we'll load the mag like that. Charging handle, safety on. Now I'll hand it to you like this. Okay. And you get into the gun, and then when you're ready to fire, we'll drop that safety thing, but not yet. Okay. So is this at a comfortable height for you? I think so, yes. And then we're gonna put our, our cheek on that right there. Okay. And we're gonna see if we can see through the optic. Yeah. Can you see through the optic? Take our trigger finger off our, off our trigger there, yep. Okay. You good? And then we'll take the safety and we'll fold it off, and then okay. you can shoot at your leisure. Mm-hmm. Nice shot. Feel like I'm moving all over the place. Nope, you're fine. Still hitting. At 225 feet. Woo! Yeah, you're center punching that A zone, so that's very good. Very I think you got one more. Yep, you're out. So the other thing with the AR is that it just has an adjustable length of pull. In AR stock, you can move in and out as much as you want to fit your shoulder, fit your face. And with this thing, you're just gonna be stuck with whatever you're stuck with, but it does look cool. We have frangible in here, and frangible doesn't always work in guns because it's a little lighter powered even than the 556 we were using earlier. Now, I like to use this because I get to shoot steel up close, but some guns run it, some don't. So again, uh, if it doesn't run it, it's not the gun's fault. So we'll try it out here. Looks like it works. Mars not even zeroed. I just got lucky there. Oh my god. <laughs> Try it one more time. All right. Help! Oh, I missed. Missed the hostage. Gotta go get more ammo. I <laughs> shot the barrel. Well, that would have worked a lot better if I would have zeroed the RMR. <laughs> So, you did not shoot the barrel. Well, we're shooting, uh, we're shooting frangible 5.56, which isn't a lot of power, but we're pumping her out of a 20-inch barrel. So, I mean, I guess when I shot near the barrel, it sounded like I hit it, but there's no holes. I mean, it sounded like I hit it for sure. Sometimes you can hit stuff, especially when you're aiming like this, because your offset is so far that let's say you can see clearly through your optic, but your barrel is actually four inches below that. So if you're, let's say, shooting over the barrel, you can see, but it's going through the barrel. home defendable but it is, it is unwieldy and i actually use the acog because because um, it's zeroed and it's just right where my little eye is so so if you're a smaller statured uh lady Individual. or fella like this and you do want to use this for home defense most people in home defense don't clear rooms or anything you could literally set this on your bed close the door call 911 and this would still be a formidable home defense weapon so you look count this badass out. too yep. you'd scare them away just by holding it up i think there you go <laughs> I don't want to hip shoot anymore. Okay. It's getting me in the arm. This is my new gun. We're not getting rid of this. Okay. I freaking love this thing. <laughs>
All right, so let's talk about my first impressions of a gun that really surprised me. I mean, it surprised you, it surprised me. Uh -huh. I got this gun and I saw it in the rack and I wanted it so bad because obviously it looks like a G36, it's an SLA. It's one of the coolest looking guns of all time. I've seen so many videos on this, I've read so many blogs, and all of them kind of have similar things to say. They have, well, it's not a G36, so it's not that good, and it's got shitty ergonomics because it's like a band era gun, and it just doesn't function that good, but you can convert them into G36s. Well, I beg to differ now, because this was so much more reliable than either of my Tommy built guns. We had this fucking ran everything, mm -hmm. like everything. It, it ran PMC, it ran 556, it ran 223, it ran Federal 223, it ran the SIG Performance, it ran 77 grain, 75 grain, 55 grain. And right? frangible. And then frangible, 45 grain polyfrange, which yep. doesn't work in a lot of ARs. This thing was eaten up like a fat kid eating cake. And I can tell you, we not only did it shoot the frangible, but it shot the frangible hip shooting, which gives it less friction to work with. And then we turned the fucker upside down and it shot upside down. What is that? I mean, this has to be the legendary uh, reliability of the G36 that I was told about. Uh, because all the American conversion kits I've ever tried were shit shows by comparison to this. This is a, the, probably the first version of the G36, I guess, that I've ever gotten straight from H&K, because it's like the only one you can get, and I was really impressed. Now, we did hip shoot it a fuck ton because it is super front heavy. Like, this is not a gun that you're going to want to be clearing, you know, houses with and stuff like that. Well, this maybe. Is a, well, if from the hip, if like you start badass. practicing, right, right. Now, it is certainly doable. We did the uh, barricade. We did a lot of stuff as far as moving it. I wanted to really test moving it out of structures and doing weird shit. So we did the barrels. We did the barricade. We did the uh, scaffolding. All that moving the, the mass of the front of the gun in and out of stuff to make sure you can do it. Just like the M16, it's not ideal, but it is doable, especially with a lot of practice. And somebody with an inferior gun with a lot more practice is always deadlier than somebody with a good gun that doesn't practice with it. And that should be known. I mean, if you have a 22 bolt action and you're fucking Doc Hollywood and some guy's never shot before and he's got a minigun, I'll take Doc Hollywood, Ho Hollywood, Holiday. You're Doc thinking Hollywood. about. So I'm thinking about fucking Back to the Future. Oh, or Paul Hollywood. Paul Hollywood, yeah, yeah. <laughs> from fucking British Baking Show. If you're the guy from the British Baking Show, you actually probably could own one of these. <laughs> it was the British gun after all, but uh, Doc Holliday. Doc Holliday is like my favorite outlaw, and I called him Doc Hollywood. How dare I? But uh, I'm just so excited. I, I probably shot more rounds through this rifle today than I have any other rifle on the channel for first shots. I mean, we dumped 350-ish rounds through this today, and to tell you how fun that must have been, it has a 10-round mag, so we loaded 35 mags. <laughs> Labor of love. Labor of love, right? And the magazine is impossible to load. Like we had to... Uh, we had to figure out a specific technique because... We did. It's easy to load double stack... Magazines on, on rifles. Yep. But it is... Single stack's a bitch. Yep. Yep. It's a unique experience. So it has a lot of deficiencies and let's start with those. So first hold on, off... Hold on. Shut up, bird! He's not gonna shut up. He doesn't even know English. He did shut up. For now. Sorry about the cat bird, everybody. But anyway, it has no threaded muzzle, so it will not accept suppressors, flash hiders, anything like that. That sucks. Going down to the handguard, the handguard is all polymer, very light, but it is not very modular. So there are ways to mount uh, accessories and stuff to this, like Picatinny rails that screw in, I believe, and stuff like that. However, mine did not come with those that I'm aware of. They could be in the box that I didn't see, but they weren't on the gun. So you can probably put a flashlight on, I almost, I'm almost certain, but the issue is not with the flashlight, the issue is with overheating. So this does overheat like crazy. And that's because of that piston system right there. It gets super, super hot. You can see I'm wearing the gloves. That's because it was really hot today. Now the charging handle system and the carry handle system is fucking awesome. I love that on the G36. I love that on the Tommy Bolts and I love that on this. The Ambi charging handle is so cool that mm -hmm. it folds out and it's a big old handle too because a lot of times charging handles are either they're too small or they're too big whereas mm -hmm. this is really perfect so you can use it on both sides and on top of that it's out of the way it's completely slick because a lot of AR charging handles they dig into your body when you're carrying them around mm -hmm. and with this you're never gonna have that problem and you're never gonna miss using it either big big fan of the charging handle maybe my favorite charging handle on any gun I liked it too. I felt like it was easy to access on the other side as well. And when you were telling me that you would load it and get it ready for me at first, like it seemed really intimidating, but in practice, 
it, it felt great. I don't know what those Germans are up to there, but it's something about H and K's. They just really like charging shit. So they have yeah. like the best charging handle. The MP5 angry. has the best charging handle. You slap it down. The G36, best charging handle. They're big fans of charging handles over there. But uh, now we have down here this super weird magwell. This is not the magwell from the G36. It's obviously half the magwell from the G36 because it does accept the single stack mags. The single stack mags suck. Having a 10 round mag capacity sucks. And also only having one mag also sucks. It didn't change how fun the gun was to shoot, but that sucks. Uh, the thumb hole stock also is terrible but it does look really cool it no? does it, it looks always really looks cool. super sweet it's not as unusable as like a stand i mean i guess i would say it's probably more unusable than a standard stock like i think i would probably rather have like a henry lever action stock than this oh i wouldn't you wouldn't you like this better i don't like any lever action i just no. meant the stock or like no, a I, shotgun I, stock. i know what you mean yeah i, I think that's better traditional but stock that's well my I, opinion yeah yeah I, I mean it's obviously been done better since but it does look very cool very space age the cheek piece is very helpful it is very comfort comfortable and obviously the rear uh butt pad is entertaining so i know that it's supposed to be uh i know that it's supposed to be soft but it actually isn't soft at all so it's like a hard rubber so not only is it not soft but it grabs like rubber so it does get stuck on stuff mm. so i would say this design is probably the worst of both worlds which is why you don't currently see this design in modern day mm -hmm. uh, now the uh, safety same as g36 it works very well uh very tactile very functional acog was a good choice in my opinion mm -hmm. i thought the acog worked very well on the gun i agree the reason why i didn't use a uh variable optic is because all my variable optics are high rise my one to eights are high rise and this is fucking high rise enough already so i went with the acog because it has a standard co-witness mount on it and that way i'm not super high off the gun because even with a standard co-witness mount you can see that this is your your uh field of vision here and this right here is your barrel so you're looking at like that big of a bore axis on the gun so if you're shooting in at, if you're shooting in barricades and stuff like that you have to keep that in mind because if you don't keep that in mind you will be putting holes for barricades now reliability of the gun was super super good i i didn't expect that i initially told you that i thought this was going to be a shit show you did and I was and like, was we're going to be banging on the ground and all kinds of stuff. None of that took place. And I wonder, because it probably has a longer gas system than my shoulder guy, and it definitely has a longer barrel. Because my, my uh, G36, I believe, is 10 and a half. So this is, a, I think, a 20-inch barrel. And uh, worked very well. You obviously get twice the velocity with that, too, so it's really nice. Not twice, but a lot more. So you get more hitting power, and it did feel like it hit with authority. And honestly, it was so easy to shoot. Uh, a beginner can do it, and I know that because she did do it. Stephanie, yeah. Yeah, Stephanie has never shot an AR-style rifle before, a semi-automatic 5.56 rifle. And she literally took it from me at the barricade mm -hmm. at 75 yards and drilled the A-zone mm -hmm. in a USPSA target like five times in a row. She's amazing. She is amazing, and it just shows the capability of the firearm. Absolutely. So this is a cool piece of history. It is interesting and it is fun. And I was initially assuming it was useless, but it is certainly not useless. If you had this for a home defense scenario, I think you would be more than well armed, especially using it in the right way. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not gonna wanna be clearing a lot of, you know, inside close quarters type stuff with this, but you know, especially if you used your tactic correctly, this would be not a problem. Uh, modern day muskets still work after all. And uh, I think this is a fantastic rifle, at least from my personal experience. I was in no way going to do a review of this. But now, if you guys want one, I wouldn't hate it. Because, I mean, holy shit, what a badass little gun. I, I want to I wanna shoot it more. I, I noticed you liked it a lot more than I thought you would. I did, but I like rifles. Looks cool. It little works girls great. like rifles. Yeah, they do. It's almost like they're easy to use. Somebody like should tell CNN reporters how easy they are to use. It's true. You ever see that video with yep, that guy? I've ah, seen it. And then that little girl bossing it? Yep. <laughs> Oh my God. Uh, but anyway, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. We plan on doing a review. We'd also love to do a couple of verses with this gun. So if you want to see that, just leave it in the comment section below. Let me know what you think about the gun and let me know what you want it compared to. And if you want a full review, if you definitely don't leave it in the comment section below, if you do, I guess have a fight. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Please support your Oklahoma shelters and remember to recycle. I'll check you later.